Hey, real estate moguls, JP Moses here, the director of Awesome, coming to you a little different format than usual. Uh, actually, recording a Google Hangout with my good buddy Dan. Uh, you can see, say hi, Dan, so we can see you pop up here. Hey, everybody, here I am. Glad to be here. Now, I don't know exactly what the quality is uh, of the video, how this is going to turn out. So, if it ends up being a little fuzzy or herky jerky, then uh, hopefully. Uh, will more than make it up with the awesomeness of what is about to be revealed to you. So uh, just uh, deal with it, okay? <laughs> yep, yep, awesomeness. For those of you who don't know my buddy Dan, he is uh, someone I've gotten to know over the last year or so, and uh, he specializes, in addition to his rich history as a real estate investor, he's one of us, he also really specializes and has a knack for helping get people unstuck. And I'll tell you, when I got started in real estate investing back, oh golly, a dozen years ago now, I uh, got started immediately right then, tied into my real estate association, jumped into leadership there. Uh, I've since been in leadership in one form or another ever since, and I've absolutely identified that being stuck or feeling stuck, feeling unable to achieve what you are aiming to achieve is a common all too common plague with real estate investors. So I'm absolutely positive that so many of us out there can relate to it. Even if we've achieved a level of success, even right now I can say I still have areas of my life that I feel stuck in. So I go to advisors like Dan to help me work through that. And it's all an inner game kind of thing. So I pointed up to my uh, Tennessee Titans hat there, Tennessee Titans. <laughs> so uh, let me just give you a quick uh, background of Dan. First of all, his website is T Dan Nichols N I C H O L S T D A N N I C H O L S dot com. You should check him out there as well. Uh, if any of this resonates with you, uh, he's had, got a rich history, like I said, flipping and rehabbing houses. Uh, he also, interestingly, has been uh, involved with the Get Motivated seminar group. So he shared audiences with the likes of. Uh, Colin Powell, Zig Ziglar, Lou Holtz, uh, some really strong, uh, influential, and inspiring people. So he's in good company. Dan, I know we're going to treat this kind of like a, a series of lessons for the community. Uh, we're going to break it up over time uh, and focus on different things in each piece, but they'll also be uh, standalone as well. So um, where are we starting today? I think we, uh, we kind of had some thoughts on what we wanted to cover and I, if I recall we wanted to start with the success disconnect and exactly what that means so uh, let me just hand off to you okay cool so um, I'm actually redoing uh, call it the 2013 version of get unstuck but uh, basically it's broken into two halves and and the first half is where I address what I call the imperatives of success and uh, using what you said, the success disconnect is basically, uh, I'll actually get to that, but it's where those pieces break down and where, what you got to analyze and figure out, you know, okay, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm, oh, okay, I can, see. in other words, what I'm going to say is I'll give you a formula. I'll give you a formula that I call the imperatives of success. Uh, I didn't make up the formula. The formula just exists. It's a universal truth. Uh, I would challenge anybody to tell me I'm wrong. Uh, it's just, I mean, it's really hard to argue with. And the truth is like that. It's hard to argue with it. So what I, here are the first three pieces to this. Very simple formula. Passion, persistence, and vision. There's three things, three things that all success demands, whether it's a spiritual pursuit, uh, whether it's a, 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 an athletic or dietary or nutritional pursuit, whether it's a business pursuit. It doesn't matter what it is. It's about being human. And these are the, these are the different pieces of success. Uh, if you're to bake a really awesome chocolate chip cookie from scratch, there's certain things that go in that. There's a recipe to that successful end product that we call a homemade cookie. And uh, success has the same thing. Everything in the universe has the same thing. It has certain pieces that have to go in for X to come out. It's the way it is, always has been. So those three things are passion, persistence, and vision, three of them. Okay, and I'm going to address each one of those, and then I'll talk about uh, the what JP had said, which was the disconnect, the word disconnect. So first and foremost, you got passion. <clears throat> passion, you know, and some people I know will say, my gosh, I'm sick of hearing about passion. Well, it's a pretty big deal, because if you're not passionate about what you're doing, then find something that you are passionate about. Move into a different career, into a different field, a different endeavor. And that's a big piece. A lot of people don't understand. They're like, why do I keep struggling year after year after year? doing this career, whatever career that is, when they really look at the heart, their heart of hearts, they say to themselves, 
because this was never really my idea anyway. This was something that got pushed on me by uh, Robert Kiyosaki's book, or this is something that you know I decided to dive into because I saw Carlton Cheats on late night TV, or uh, you know uh, some of us, us that might be old enough to remember Dave Del Dotto. I remember him when I was a little kid. Oh was, yes, the Del Dotto. Oh yeah, I mean he was the original guru guy, wasn't he? I mean right, like right. did he have a big uh, mustache too? Oh yeah. yeah, we're talking seventies, man. And and I remember as a you know in the seventies I was I was ten years old. And um, I remember looking at Dave Delgado and just thinking back then, I'm like, I want to do that. But I had to look at what drove me. Was it because I wanted to sit margaritas under a veranda? At 10, probably not. But the idea of being out there in Hawaii with my Hawaiian shirt on and he had ladies around him and everything, I'm like, oh, yeah, that looks like a cool deal, you know? But you got to look at where, you know, wh whatever it is you're passionate about, you got to look at where that comes from. And a lot of people can't really even tell you where a passion comes from. And I would challenge you to say that that's probably when you're closer to finding your true passion. Now, if that sounds confusing, it might be. Here's the deal. A lot of times our passions, we just can't explain them. For example, I'm passionate about helping people get unstuck with their businesses as entrepreneurs, as real estate investors, whatever it is. Um, I'm passionate about that. I don't really know why. I just always have been. I, was, I gravitated to Zig Ziglar and Les Brown and Og Mandino when I was a young kid. I listened to their tapes, listened to their CDs, and I don't really know why. It just was always there. Um, I know that there were times in my life where I pursued other things, like out of high school, uh, I was passionate about being an entrepreneur, uh, and I went into business right away out of high school. Uh, for years, I cut lawns, but what, you know, what do you do when you're 18 years old? With no, I didn't have a degree or anything, you know, so for five years, I had a lawn business, and, uh, but at some point, what I figured out was like, you know, I'm definitely not passionate about cutting lawns. That was just not something I always wanted to do. Uh, but e I look back to like when I was in, uh, in high school, as soon as I got my license, I went and took my first real estate investment class. This passion around real estate has always been there for me. So there was something that hooked me at a young age uh, and it's always been there for me. Um, I would just encourage people to look, to look for their passion. Maybe that ridiculous idea that you don't share with anybody anymore. Maybe it's to quit everything that you're doing now and open up your own food truck or start making homemade meals for people. I don't know what that passion is, but it's some there, somewhere there, probably buried underneath a whole bunch of fear or a whole bunch of dogma of what people told you you should do or what you should be. So anyway, that's passion. It's the thing that gets you out of bed in the morning, the thing that really lights you up, ignites your fire, makes you want to do it. You know, uh, uh, let me just interrupt. Yeah. There's, a, there's an important piece to what you said there that, I, that really resonates with me that I want to be sure we don't accidentally miss, and that is that for some of us, this uh, uncovering of our passion may actually end up leading us out of real estate investing. Yes, yes. There's been a season where I lost my passion for real estate investing and was like, you know what? I've been doing this for years. I know how to do it. I know how to make money with it, but it just doesn't juice me anymore. And I went from full-time investor back to part-time investor. So I you know, kept paying the bills, but I really moved my attention into things that I was much more passionate about. And we don't always have the luxury of being able to snap our fingers and do that. But I right. think uh, realizing that just because we're all real estate investors doesn't mean that we're somehow mm -hmm. losing the faith if you decide that because your passion isn't there that you're going to move into another arena. Really, when it comes to living a fulfilling life, being involved in something that juices you is way more rewarding than just making the end all be money and make that your passion. I think that's really not going to fulfill anyone ultimately if they just do whatever they perceive will make them money. Yeah, and you know, I'm really happy, JP, that you brought that up, especially since you're the guy that said, hey, Dan, we want to get you on this call because it is always a pickle, a tightrope of sorts for me to walk when I present to real estate investment groups. You have 400 people out there sitting in front of you, and you know that there's that three percent of them maybe are actually engaged in a daily basis and earning an income from this real estate I, in any given audience, right? Just a few percent, and it's a pickle. And it, like I said, it's a tightrope because the promoters ask me to come in and speak, and now I'm kind of telling them like, "Hey, people, maybe real estate's not for you." It's one of the hard, you know. It, it, for me, it's a very simple thing to do to somebody to share with them like. You know what? I mean, like, I, I actually remember this like it was yesterday. I had a client that I was coaching for a while, and it was the first conversation I had with him, how he shared with me in um, north, uh, northwest uh, United States, up in uh, Oregon or something. They had a family walnut farm or something like that, and it was in the family forever. And he brought it up several times. And, how, and then he was, went on to talk about his real estate business and how it's not going, how it wasn't going very well. He had no enthusiasm, no passion. No excitement. It didn't excite him. He did it because he thought, well, I'm going to make a bunch of money. 
Another unique thing about passion. Passion is um, passion. If you're not fulfilling, you know, if you're not doing something that fulfills your heart and soul, you're probably not going to be very good at it either. Mm. You know, it's just not going. Like you said, it's not going to get you out of bed in the morning. You're not going to do it with. And, and if you are any good at it, you're probably going to be mediocre at best. You know, because the guy. I always I talk about a friend of mine in martial arts. I've been a martial artist my whole life, decades of martial arts, and I had this one guy that I grew up with, and he was just always going to be better than me. And people are like, well, why is that? Because he eats, sleeps, and drinks it. He does it 24-7. That's all he does. When he walks into a restaurant, he's looking around for exits. He's looking around for improvised weapons. He's looking around to see how people are holding their bodies and their statures and their movements. When I walk into the same restaurant, I'm looking at the signage. I'm looking at how they market. I'm looking at the menus. I'm looking at <clears> – <throat> yesterday I was at the auto show. I watched the uh, spokespeople, are, all of them, to a T, to a T, were on their cell phones or had their cell phones in their hand. I'm a consumer walking through the Detroit Auto Show, and I'm thinking to myself, man, this is one of the biggest auto shows in the world. And we're paying these people good money to represent Lincoln or whoever they're representing, and they're, they got their cell phones, and they're out texting each other. And they're supposed to be the product specialists. And gate. So mm -hmm. that, like, drove me, you know, I was like, you got to be kidding me. If you know, if I was the manager of this thing, I'd be shutting this down. Anyway, but that's what passion does. It, it kind of leaves you on, on the whole time. It excites you. And a lot of entrepreneurs uh, gravitate and try lots of different things until they finally find the thing. So it's okay. I always tell people, whatever you're doing now is okay. Don't be upset about it. They'll beat themselves up. Oh, I shouldn't have been doing that. I shouldn't have wasted my time. Look it. You couldn't have got to where you are now that would be disappointed, upset, apathetic, bored if you hadn't done that thing that got you there. Because in a process to find yourself, you never find yourself. You've been there all along. What you do is whittle away to find the best self, that piece underneath. You take a pumpkin out, it ends up a jack-o'-lantern. The jack-o'-lantern's always been in there, and that's how you are too. So cha cha change comes as a result of trying things. So like Kiyosaki, I, 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 I don't drink his Kool-Aid, but... Um, you know, one of the one of the things that he talks about in his in his uh, his book was that, and I completely think it's an awesome statement. He said, "Get involved if you've never been an entrepreneur before. Do multi level marketing. Why? Mm -hmm. It's a cheap, simple investment. It's fifty bucks, a hundred bucks, hundred and fifty to get started, and you will certainly find out real quick what you're wired for and what you're not. And if you don't find out exactly what that is, you know, your your in your internal GPS will get you way closer because you'll find out the shampoo or vitamins or whatever it is you're selling." aren't for you and then you go on to the next thing but you learn cheap so so that, well, that's the well said, well said. Yeah. one of the things uh, when I just when I talk to new investors uh, I talk about the first two years in the business being uh, a lot of that testing ground time and one of your primary missions is to figure out if first of all if you're even meant to be a real estate investor and you figure that out through some trial and error and by just immersing yourself in it and seeing how how it juices you and and what what you connect with and then secondly if you're going to be a real estate investor you figure out uh, what the best fit in the real estate investing industry is and a large percentage of what determines that best fit is uh, what you're good at but also what you're passionate about a lot of people are wired to be wholesalers because they're passionate about quick in quick out they love the just deal after deal after deal and other people are passionate about rehabbing because they love the creative aspect of it they're passionate about how a house is staged and choosing the right colors uh, totally different expressions within the same industry of people's passions so I just another example for that I guess and JP you know we could probably spend 20 minutes just 30 minutes talking on passion and I go heavy into that with my program and I can only broad brushstroke some of this stuff but you nailed it you have twice led me to where I need to go next, and here's where you nailed it. You nailed it, nailed it, nailed it. This is really important, people. I am not passionate about being a business coach. <laughs> Boring. I'm not passionate about being a real estate investor. It's not the thing. It's always the process. It's always the process. You nailed it. People are excited by processes. A doctor is excited about getting somebody into his office, looking around, and finding out what's wrong. That's what an engineer likes to take, instead of a person, likes to take a part, an automotive part maybe. Look around, 
figure it out. Find out where the stress fractures are. It's always about the process. So you nailed it, and that's really important. And I'm glad you brought that up because it, it's helping to make this even a more you know powerful conversation because process, process, process. And if you look back at your life and you find out the endeavors that you were in or the classes that you liked in school or whatever, start to study the process and say, oh, I mean, like for me personally, I like I like geology. I like metal shop. I like wood shop. I loved cooking class. Uh, I, I, you know, I, 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 there were so many different. I love, I loved science. I love things at the atomic level. You want to talk about molecules? I will talk to you all day about molecules. And it's that excitement that passes completely over to my excitement behind um, helping to coach somebody out of a problem, because I like to get things granular. And that's how I created my, my, my product, Get Unstuck. I go granular. I go all the way down to that granular level and look at how it operates so that I can dissect it and make it make sense you know, to the world. So anyway, ah, that was good. I'm glad that you brought that up. <laughs> so we've got those three ingredients, passion, persistence, and vision. I think we've done passion. So let's hit persistence, yep. I guess. Yep, persistence. Persistence is really simply the work. And I'm going to tell you right now, you give, you give me somebody that's, that's persistent, that is always the greatest barrier to their true success. I, it's really hard for me to even, because a lot of people are passionate about all sorts of things, but they fail to do the work. True or false, JP? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. They, they just fail to do the work. I mean, I'm so excited about real estate investing, I can't. You don't do the work, man. How many calls did you make yesterday? Did you send out postcards? Did you hang any bandit signs? Did you do any of that? Well, no, no, no. I mean, you know, I, I'm just hoping people start calling. Okay. That's the work. I'm, I don't need to beat that one. Other than one, one final piece to that is that passion is the flame of persistence. It's that thing that keeps persist, keeps you pushing, pushing, pushing. That's that's what that's where persistence falls into the equation. But those two pieces you need together, and then ultimately you need to persist towards something. There's nowhere in the world where you can get somewhere if you don't know where you're going. It's that simple. I don't care if it's on a boat, in a plane, in a car, walking, or in a business. We're in, I talked to, uh, I don't know if you know Jason Wojo or not, but I talked yeah, to him. Yeah, uh, Wojo's a good buddy. Yeah, we uh, actually, um, had, I did an interview with him uh, yesterday, actually, in, in the fitness industry, same thing. If you don't know what you want, you ain't going to get it. If you want to be 300 pound, rip chiseled and rock hard, you need to know that you need to consume 5,000 calories a day of high protein and you know all that stuff. It's a very methodical process. Um, you need to at least know where you're going. Zig Ziglar used to say, do you want to be a wandering generality or a meaningful <laughs> specific? All right, man, so that's that my Zig Ziglar. Good impression. Oh man, I got, I, I, yeah, I, I love the Zig. So, all right, so that's persistence. And then vision is really simple. When you start on a house on a rehab project, you know, especially experienced investors, you know down to the bricks and mortar, you know down to the type of glue, to the type of screws and drywall and where you know all the way down to the final, final oomph what that what's going into that project. You just do. And the more experience that you have, you get better and better at that. And that is the same with vision. Paint your vision with that kind of clarity. Know what the place is going to smell like when you're done your goal. Know what it's going to smell like. Know everything that goes into it. Know exactly how it's going to look. You want a long range project on your business? See the semi trucks backing up, loading two by fours and you know uh, bulk screws into your, into, into your garage. Whatever that is, see that vision clearly because it needs to make it real up here for it to be real out there. Um, and then finally, uh, we get to JP to, unless you had a question on that piece, those are three things though. Passion, persistence, and vision. You need all three. You need all three. No success happens anywhere without all three of those, period. And if you ever, ever, ever find yourself treading water, you just need to look at those three things and say, which one's lacking? You can't be passionate about the whales from your lazy boy in Detroit, Michigan. You can't because you can't do anything about it. You got to go out and do the work. So um, that leads me to the last piece. That's the disconnect. If things aren't working out, find out where they're disconnected. Is it passions disconnected from persistence or persistence from uh, vision? Maybe you're passionate and you have a good, clear vision. You just don't want to do the work. You know, so the, that's that's those three pieces. And then um, a takeaway on this would be uh, very just paying attention to the disconnect. That gut feeling that you get that stuff's just not working. How come JP is making money at this and I'm not? What's he doing differently? What is it that JP's doing differently? 
What is it that Trevor's doing differently? What is it that Jason's doing differently? And start to just kind of see, you know, what it is. And, and you'll find out that they maybe they're really excited about it. They have a really clear vision. They know exactly where they're going. Maybe they get up and actually do the work every day. I watched something on Costco the other day. The guy that started Costco, he's 70-something years old. 200 days a year he's on the road at his stores. Just like who? Sam Walton. Same mm -hmm. thing. Donald Trump. My brother was sitting, my brother sells um, these really high-end fabrics that are all science, kind of like uh, performance fabrics, they call them, and they put them on mattresses. My brother was sitting down with an executive from a company, from uh, Serta or Sealy, I can't remember which. He gets a phone call, he picks it up, he says, oh, hey, how you doing, Donald? Donald's like, hey, how's it going? And they're talking on the phone. Donald asks him, how were the sales this weekend? And my brother says, this is Donald Trump calling to check and see how the Trump mattresses are selling. Everybody think, well, Donald's too busy for that. Donald's too big for that. No, he's not. As Donald said to, to the, the owner of this company, he said to him right then, he said, if I'm too busy to make phone calls, you know, then I shouldn't be in the business, man. Because if it's got my name on it, I need to pay attention. Mm. So. so passion, persistence. Vision. Those are the three ingredients that you got to have uh, in your success you cookies that you're baking. And if you're not achieving the success uh, that you feel like you are aiming for and that you deserve, then it's very likely that you have a disconnect between one of those three things. Yes. And so, uh, and I'm just kind of re regurgitating, I guess, what you sure. said here. But if I try to, if I try to carve some specific action items out of this, it would be to, um, first of all, analyze those three areas, passion, persistence, and vision, and see if any of those three are disconnected or even missing entirely. And Completely. see if they match where you are right now. And if not, then you need to correct course so that they will match uh, so that you can connect any of those disconnects. Anything else in terms of, uh, of action? No, I think that's pretty clear. Um, maybe we could do another video on purpose sometime because that's another big one. It's a hugely big one. People wonder what their purpose is and they confuse it with passion a lot. So, But we'll just leave that as a teaser. Awesome. Two very different things. All right, Dan. Thank you, my friend. Good stuff. Thank you. Uh, everybody, that wraps up this lesson with Dan, tdannichols.com. Check him out over there, and we'll catch you guys on the next lesson, uh, which will be posted in the not-too-distant future. Take care, everyone. Mm -hmm.